Greetings, denizens of the wall. See, Baradona's repaired. Behind the camera we have Wellington Slay. Say hello to the children, Wellington Slay. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Now leave me alone. Very good. So for today, is, uh, the subject will be about uh, texture tools. They're these things right here, which I make out of chopsticks. Why chopsticks? I'm a cheap bastard, that's why. But they work very well for it, and I'll show you how to make these and to use them specifically, 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 I can't pronounce it, on Super Sculpty. Super, I use the super, the softer medium of Super Sculpty, works very well with. Also, Abe's Epoxy Sculpt is a favorite of mine. I use quite that quite a bit, and a lot of people use something called Green Stuff. I, I have that in my butt, I've never seen it before, but I heard it's very well. You could probably use that for it too. Now, Everything that I do is basically Nurgly. If you and if you know Warhammer 40k, Nurgly is the uh, the grandfather of contagions, a very happy fellow, and everything is, is fungoid and rotten and horrible. And I'm a one trick pony, so everything ends up that way, like this little beastie here. Oh, isn't he cute? So basically, today will be how to make really disgusting textures on things. Oh, Lady, you don't want to kiss it? Don't you want to kiss the baby? Oh, it's probably blurred out right there. Probably have to cut that, but there we go. So. Let's all head over down here to the workstation, and Denzins, here we go. <laughs> and here we go. Here are my favorite texture tools right here. Now, basically, they come in three basic shapes. The first one, this will be the round, as you can see. This one I call the claw or the finger, and this can come in various sizes. It doesn't have, they can be very small, very large, all for different applications there. And the last one here I call the toadstool. I used to call it the dog pee pee, but I'm trying to keep this G rated for the kitties. So there we go here. Now to make these, what I first do is I get a chopstick. Where's the chopstick? Oh yeah, a nice clean chopstick right here. Show you an example. And I take JB Whale, that's this regular epoxy you can get at the hardware store. And let me get a pallet. Uh, what do I do with the pallet? Oh, here we go. Now for a pallet, because I'm so damn cheap, they were giving these out years ago for the zombie walk in 2013 over in uh, Atlantic City, but since uh, they had a bit of extra ones there, I took a couple with me and I could do my, I do all my mixes on these because I got like a pile of 500 of them. Okay, so there's one part and then you go with an equal part here. And I'm going to mix it up. I use a little bit of So Strong just for the video so you can actually see it. So Strong is a colorant made by Smooth On. And we're going to mix that up nice and good. Yeah, I think I mixed up a little too much. But give that, make sure you get it all nice and mixed well. Okay, I guess that, that's good enough for now. And I'm going to put some on the end right here. This will be the first thing that I do. Put a little on there. And let me move this for a second. I'm going to go get the sand. And once that's done, I'm going to a little, just cover that nice and even right there. Okay, and let that set. As a matter of fact, you might want to take a look at it. Sometimes it gets, now you have a little sand on it. You might just have to poke it, just even. Okay, that's good. Recover that. Now the sand you could probably get from any uh, aquarium, probably, but where I get this from, this is sand from Brigantine Beach in Brigantine, New Jersey, where several years ago there used to be Brigantine Castle, or Five Falls of Living Horror. So I only use sand from here and from also Long Branch. Long Branch had the Haunted Mansion in Long Branch, so this sort of like empowers it. It's like doing a spell. I have to use like certain sand. I'm very picky about that. So there we go. La -da -da. Okay, now once that dries in five minutes, what I do use for these is I use Aves Epoxy Sculpt. It's a two-part mix, and when it when it, dri it dries in about 45 minutes to a hard, uh, pretty much a little bit harder than porcelain. And I basically start off with, let's see, I'll, uh, I'm going to mix them up here. Keep this in little containers. 
of the motorcycle. That goes right great with the video. Okay, let's get these 50-50 mix. And this comes in a neutral color. I use colorant. I go over to, um, where is that? Uh, the, like the hardware store. And I ask for some, what they have there is the, uh, what was it? The, um, the pigment. I couldn't think of the name. Mix it with a little bit of pigment. So I got like a green color. So it's the, it's not just a base gray color. Okay, and then mix these together, 50-50. Okay, and then, oh yeah, make sure you cover these up too. Don't want them drying out. It takes a long time to dry out, but I'm very cheap and hate to buy more of it. Cheap you are. Oh, Wellington's not very nice today, is he? Okay. And for the beginners with a little more, a little more. Okay, so we have the, the epoxy. So let's do one. We'll do the equivalent to this. Okay, so we're going to have a one round end. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Just kind of roll that into a ball. And we'll do the other end as the, uh, the claw of the finger. And you can pretty much just round that out, make a cone, get that down a little better there. And you can also do these straight. You can make a straight tool. The finger doesn't always have to be curved. It can also be, let's see, what's an example of one that's straight? Oh, okay, here's, here's an example. It can also be straight for texturing, too. But for the finger, you get it like that, and then this one's going to be curved, so I'm just going to give it a little curve, like that. And I'm going to set this off to dry. Usually it'll harden about 45 minutes, but I usually let it go overnight. Okay, here's a... Now this one here, I'll show an example of the toadstool. Sometimes you can do this too. You could wipe it onto the sand. Now the reason for the sand is, it gives it a much better grip, as you can see right here. If you usually just stick it right to the, uh, right to the chopstick, a lot of times when you're working it, you end up pushing it off. It doesn't stick that well, but here, I mean, it's gonna stick right to it. It's not gonna go anywhere. I use sand, I use my Brigantine and Haunted Mansion sand on everything. That's for by name. Okay, so then for the toadstool, I'm going to put a little, wrap this here on the bottom, a little bit on the top. And then we're going to round it here. I'm just going to take my finger and this, this can be very basic right now. It doesn't have to be like a perfect, perfect thing. Just as long as it's close enough, because this is going to get sculpted over. The reason for this is, I want this to be set and be 100% hard the next time I sand it, then it'll be ready for the texture because I'm gonna coat it with another coat of this and that's what's gonna take the texture. And as I'll show you as I'm doing it, I don't want to, um, I want to keep the, uh, basically the, uh, the, under, the under part the most the st strong. So that's why I'm doing it this way. So there we go. Okay, so I'll put these aside. Okay, and as we know, we have the other ones drawing in the sand, but now we can continue with this. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to go grab some more. This is for the texture. I'm going to grab the, a new batch, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash my hands because I've mixed them together. I get a little bit on both hands and I don't want to like grab some and grab some and contaminate it. It'll start to dry now. So I'll be right back as I give a little wash you poo. Okay, I'm back again, and as you can see, I'll grab, I grab one with one hand, and I won't use this same hand to grab that and go back in here, because it will affect it, but, so this is, this is the part B, and here's to the part A, I'm going to grab that, two equal parts, let's see, uh, yeah, that's pretty good, and mix it again. Now what I'm going to want to do now is, I'm going to find different objects that I want to replicate the type of texture. 
Actually, while well, oranges work very well, I'll show you a few other things that I use. But you could find anything even lying around. One thing that worked very well for me was actually Brazil nut. But, let's see. Now, that's the Brazil nut shell, not the actual thing that you would eat. Unless you want to eat the shell, but I wouldn't suggest it. La, da, da, da. Now, we'll apply it on here. And as I said before, this one was pre-sanded. And also remember too that when you make the uh, when you make the uh, the original one, make it a little bit smaller than you want it to be because this is going to build up on it. And I'm going to give it like a very like a sixteenth inch of a inch of a coat right there. Okay, this is going to be a rather large one. Okay. We'll use the rest on this one. And sometimes you get a little bit of water just to smooth it out a little bit. Uh, there we go. A little dab there and not too much. And at this point, it's usually, the longer you let this wait, the more it sets up. But when you reach a setup point of about 20 minutes, it's usually perfect. So, but to speed things up, I'll show you another little trick we can do here. Okay, so. Let's go example of, of different things that we could use to texture it. Actually, the, one of the best pieces I have is, guess what this is? This is a piece of Brigantine Castle. Yes, this came off of actually in the parking lot where they had the lamppost, but it was done in the same brickwork as the Brigantine Castle. And that was actually where my favorite tool came out from this one is. And that one basically, when, the clay, when it was in the epoxy state, I just rolled it on here and got to the texture, but I'll show you that in a moment. Also, you can use other, any different thing you can find. Let's take, for instance, as oranges. Now, here we go. These are actually in my refrigerator. Okay, that one is probably about like a couple of years old. That one's probably a couple of months. And then we have, okay, a couple of weeks. And that one's actually the freshest one we have. And I think uh, all we need now is Igor. I ain't got nobody over here. So these textures here can be used also. Oh, you look at that one. Mmm, mm, so, um, ew, that one was pretty horrible. Yeah. Good Lord, Baragonis. <laughs> Did you get... even eat today? <laughs> no. Nobody feeds me. Everybody's mean to me. Now, I also patter these. What I usually use is Wet System 404 high adhesive filler, but you really shouldn't breathe this stuff in. It isn't too healthy. So we're going to use baby powder. We're going to that be with you today. explains it. <laughs> leave me alone. Leave me alone. Why can't they just leave me alone? <laughs> so a little bit of baby powder. That's a lot of bit of baby powder. Uh, smooth it on. This will keep it from sticking. Okay. Oh, this one here. Now, for the different textures you can get, this one here, let's try the orange peel. Let's try this one. Okay, so, uh, just gently try to get that texture on there. And this will give everything a nice, fungid, rotten look to it. Doesn't have to be even. 
Now, this is just what I do. You could try anything you want with these to see if they work, see if this process works for you. This is really a suggestion more than anything else. Okay, let me go look at it a little bit closer. Let's see. Oh, okay, missed a big spot right there. Getting some lines in there too, I don't want those. So you could just keep going over it until you get it just right. I'll round that off right there. Let's see. And you could even do multiple things. I could even mix a piece of the brigantine in there too. See how that looks. Is that? Yeah, that works. So put just a little bit of that texture in there also. Oops. That's a little too deep. Okay. And often too, I'll take one of these little bally things here. And I'll just add a little a couple of dots there. That'll, that'll put a little bit of warts in it. And here's a smaller one. And a few parts that it didn't kind of work out, I try to actually replicate how the rest of it looks. So, okay, that's nice and ghoulish looking there. Now, what you can also do is you can make something what I call the strawberry, where I take the entire tool. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And I just simply, I put indentations over the entire thing, and I'll show you later how that works for making scales. So this texture here will basically be the typical rotted fungid look. Okay. Right. Okay, I think that works for that one. Now let's see, what do we want to do with this one here? What sort of texture will, should we give it? Okay, let's start with... Hmm, I'm going to give this one a lighter texture, so... I'll start with the brigantine over here a little bit. And uh, maybe get that a little smooth down there. And next, I'm actually going to do a claw effect. So I'm going to try to get, matter of fact, I can cheat and use another tool. Kind of get a nice little. So give things a nice veiny look. Now there's another option to doing this too, and so I'm going long ways with this. I could also go this way with it, and when you do that, you can do a texture for things like lips. Which let's see, where's the? Let's see, I have an example. I'll show that later, but you, I'll show you the one later that you can go that way with it. So, okay, that's maybe I mess with it a little bit more. Had a couple little variations in it. Okay, so that's two types right there. Off to the next step. Here we go. This is what we are super sculpty. I got that at the local craft store. Now, this comes in sort of a translucent flesh color, and my eyes don't work so well with this. So what I do is I mix it with another color. I, what I do is I get Sculpty 3. Sculpty 3 here, for instance, this is called Leaf Green. So what I do is to, to make my own, I go from about, let's see, about... a. Uh, uh, one quarter to one mix, so that's still a little too small, just a little bit more. Okay, there we go. I think that, that'll work. And I roll it into a snake, roll this one into a snake. And a little bit longer, and let's mix those together. I'm going to twirl them up like a candy cane first. Okay. 
and keep rolling it and mixing it and rolling it to mix it till it becomes one uniform color which it will end up like that so let's save some time I'll finish mixing that later so that's the sculpting now this right here this is from Craft Smart this is Craft Smart here polymer clay I got this from Michaels now this is cheaper than sculpting it doesn't work as good but it's great for buildups so I'll take some of this this comes pre-colored I got like brown here and what I want to do is when I mix something like a tentacle I'll take it and I, here we go, I have a uh, piece of aluminum wire here I sand it up. And then I build it up, this one's already, uh, this heated and dried in the oven. And this is what we're going to be texturing later, so I'm going to put this together here, let it, and as you can see it's sanded, it sticks way much better to the sanded pieces than a regular piece of aluminum, it would pretty much slide off, it's hard to get it to stay. So, and the more war the warmer you get this, the better. So sometimes I actually, when I'm sculpting, I tuck it in my underwear. That's a true story. Or in my sock. Just to get it Gross. like... Gross! Yes, <laughs> it's delicious, actually. There we go. La, ta, 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 ta. Yeah, it's a little bit colder than usual. Basically, I'll get it to... And when I cook this, what I always do is, even though the instructions say different, I always cook Sculpty or Polymer at 220 for 50 minutes. That's my rule. That always works, seems to work for me. So, let's get this. And I don't really have to do the whole thing. As it's going up, you can basically, when you get toward the end, it can become one regular size and you can just build up on that. I just want to get the, the thickest part done as you can see with this one. And I put like a little piece on the end there too. Little tongue piece. So after I'm done with this, this would go in the oven and bake it for 50 minutes and then I would leave it in there. You leave it in the oven until it's entirely cooled off. I give it like several hours. If you pull it out of the oven too soon, it starts to, um, to shrink too fast and you get cracks because heat expands it. So basically, yeah, then that would go into the oven. But we can move on to the next part because this one's already dried. And as usual, we would do the sand trick onto this one. Get that, do the same trick where we, I usually use a rubber glove and I do the same thing, the two part mix and I would cover it entirely. And here's what you would get in the end. And to save some time there, there's one that's already been sanded. And we'll be texturing this one later here too. Now here's what the project's going to be. Because I want to show the different textures, I'm building a creature. Now this originally was some kid's art project I got thrown in the dumpster. No wonder. It was like some kind of vase or something like that. So what I did is I covered it entirely in sand. A uh, sand again. Anakin hates that stuff. You know, it's dry and it gets in your cracks or whatever. Whatever he says. He's always whining. Shut up, Anakin. And I also added this because I want to show the texture for doing a horn. This was a piece of tin foil I banged into a shape and then covered it with epoxy. So that'll be that. That'll be getting covered. But for for this project, I'm going to make like a Frankenstein mixture of different skin textures, and I'm probably going to use it for a piece for a Warhammer 40k because they have terrain and buildings where I'm going to add this to it. Actually, it'll be something like a. Um, miasmic uh, mag magnifier or just a piece on the table but the story behind it is these evil space lords basically took these creatures called chaos spawns specifically giant chaos spawns and they, they frankensteined it and they put different tech to put different things together to make a giant one and it breathes all sorts of nasty things all over the planet and probably in the game you'll have like the space marines or somebody or the eldari the space elves trying to destroy this and it would be like to attack and defend if you've ever played uh, 40k you'll know what i'm talking about or it could be used in a whole somewhere just something creepy in the background okay so let's start with I'll show you look you thought I was kidding yes look it's in my sock here we go ah oh, there we go get that nice and warm in my sock and now meanwhile don't forget this was already cooked and dried so the uh, the polymer clay was dried and then covered with sand and now I can cover it with this Okay, and I'm just going to go an even coat going all the way up. Okay, so here we have, we have this completely covered now with the super sculpty. So to give this a texture, I think I'm going to give it 
a sort of just a typical gross tentacle look to it. So what we have here is, I'm going to take three tools. Each one is pretty much, they're pretty much close to each other. Actually, this side right here. And I believe these are all from using a piece of masonry. Taken off a piece of masonry right there. Some of it might even came off of a, uh, a back of a mill cart. And if you've ever seen those plastic ones where it has that, like that textured side, you can roll it on that too. That gives it a nice little texture. But to start with, we're going to start with the toadstool. This is perfect for this one right here. So as we go, we're going to just roll it up there and see how it gives it that texture, that really yucky sort of rotted fungoid texture to it right there. But we don't want to keep it the entire thing. Well, yeah, I guess we could actually. But I had a, like a, had a little bit of... Uh, I'll use the other texture tools. Like, see this little, put a little bit of a line in there, almost like a vein. And it had just a little bit of a dis slightly different accent to it. And you could even take it and just poke it around a little bit. So it kind of has a couple little holes in there. So it's a nice little gross look. Let's try this one here. Let's see what this one does. Ooh. Ooh, got baby powder all over it. That shouldn't harm it, but okay, that one. Eh, not as good as the others, but I'll, I'll accent it, accent it, accent it with that one a little more. And let's keep going with this one. This one seems to be the best so far. Actually, just give it a nice roll up. And it's leaving that texture. So I'm basically using the center of the tool the most. I could even use the front of the tool for a little bit kind of change it up a little bit up there because I'm not, I don't have to give it a, I'm trying to keep it from having a uniform look. Because, you know, this is a disgusting creature of chaos. It's not supposed to be all uniform. Let's keep it yucky. Okay, let's try a little, cup, poke a little, couple of little holes in there. And continue on. Now I have another toadstool here. I'm just going to Let's try it. This one has a, uh, as it's getting smaller and smaller, this one has a finer sort of detail. Okay, that works. Because as you see, as it tapers up, it's all not the same size. So I'm just going to hit a couple of spots with that. I still want, this one still seems to be working the best. Okay, let's experiment. Let's add. Now, as you can see, here's one here. This is the uh, the one I call the claw. I'm just gonna put a couple of little, couple of deep toward the bottom, deep wrinkles in it. I just work my way up, and I'm working the texture right off the other texture. I just keep going until I get it the way I like it, and just keep rolling that. See as we roll that there. Now, as it gets skinnier and skinnier, I don't want to keep the same size. So, let's see what we have similar to this. That might work. Hmm, what do we have here? Ah, this one. So, basically, these are these are pretty close together. But this one here, it's starting to go into a finer sort of piece. So, yeah, there we go. Look at that. That claw right there. And less and less as we get toward the tip. Back to this one a little bit. Maybe roll this on a few spots and keep your eyes out because in some spots you kind of miss it. Like that one lost some detail there too. So. Okay. I'm going to grab another tool. This one's similar. That's a very small one. And that's good for little dots and little, little rotted areas. Let's see. And as you can see, as I get to the finer detail, I bring that closer to the tip because that's where it's sort of 
leveling out. Oh, I missed a big spot right there. Oh, I'm going to go back with this one. Let's get that big boy in there. Okay. Let's see where I'm up. Oh, okay. Here's a little spot here I kind of missed, but I think I'm just going to put a couple little detail holes in there. Okay, and I think that works. Now there's another trick you can do too to add a little bit more detail to it before I put it in the oven. Is I'm going to use the heat gun. And you have to do this right before you put it into the oven. Because if you can't let it like dry and then go back later, because once it's heated, it has to go through the entire process. Now another thing too that I'm going to do is once it's heated, when I put it into the oven, what I do is what I do actually use here is I got I have a used toaster oven that I cook this in. Do not use it in your regular toaster oven because this stuff is actually could poison the. Uh, it's got polyvinyl chloride in it or something. You don't want to poison your regular toaster oven you're going to eat. So I went down to a, one of those consignment stores. I got one. And on the bottom of the tray, I filled it with sand to lay in so that it would basically wouldn't be like a flat surface that would like kind of burn into it and you'd end up with a flat surface. But another thing you do too, this with the heat guns working for two different, works two different ways here pretty well, is this will add a little extra detail to it and it'll harden just the surface so you could put it on top of the sand and when it comes out in the end it won't actually be flattened from being into the oven. So here, let's put that high. It takes a little while. Now, as you can see, that puts a little bit more of a gross detail in it. You can get a lot of areas. It kind of burns it and raises it just a little bit. You don't want to hold it on there too long. Now usually when I do this too, now I don't have to worry in this case because I have enough to grab, but if you don't have enough to grab, you might want to grab wherever you're, uh, you're ending here with a pair of pliers or something or channel locks so you don't burn your hand and dry it and drop it. Pot's a little bare, so I'm going to hold it there a little bit longer, and there, the heat did the, the, the job for me that I missed. Okay. And as you see right here, okay, this is the tray I was talking about. I actually made a homemade tray that I, um, I took some aluminum and I bent it to shape. And because that's nice and uh, cooked right there, I can put that down. I put it down there nice and gentle, and when I'm done, I can just take some of the sand will stick to it, but I can just wipe it off with my finger, and it's nurgly anyway, so who cares if it looks disgusting. So, there's no babies in there. It's not cheap this thing, because I have to use this to keep it shut. And when I have it on 220 degrees, and I'm going to put it on for 50 minutes. On bake. And there we go for that. And then. Uh, and like I said before, I will not take that out immediately. I pretty much leave everything overnight just to be on the safe side. Like if you took this out in probably four hours, you're okay. But if you, if once it was, was cooked 100% and it, it, it dinged right it went off and you pulled it out, then that's what I could, like I said, it would start cracking because with the expanding and contraction, it would be contracting too quickly and then you could like mess things up. So there we go with that. Yay, off to the next step. 
And here we go right now. Now this is the project we started before. A few weeks have gone by. And basically what this is, I'm going to use this as an example for the different types of textures. This is actually for the game Warhammer, and it will be used as a piece of terrain, Nurgle terrain in particular. Uh, it also could be used as a miasmic magnifier, but the proportions are wrong. Depends on if you were playing with her cool, then they're not going to cry like little babies. So basically what this would be in the lore was, it would be a, a piece of terrain created from the, uh, the gigantic chaos spawn. Several of them. It's, a, it's Frankenstein from several pieces and skins have been put together to make this contraption that spits all this really grows stuff all over the field and screws the enemy up. So basically on the demon world of Chebclon, they have these creatures roaming and here, oh here's, here we go, yay! Here's one of the plague marines, one of my plague marines, this will give you a scale if you play the game. And they hunt these down and they use the parts to make these, uh, these engines of doom here. So okay, so let's start with, okay this is the most basic, one of my most uh, basic textures right here. This is just kind of like the fungal flesh, flesh texture. And it's a very, it's this tool right here, they have, they're very mild um, sort of texturing. And I have them in different sizes too here. We have, okay, oh yeah, here's the other one. Basically, it's the same texture, but I tried them in different designs. And as you can see, this was originally mostly rolled with this side. So this was rolled onto the clay to make the textures. I went over, I did a couple of deep, crevices with the opposite side and added a couple little dots here and there and you know little intrusions going into that point so that's basically these were used to create this very um, very mild sort of texture which works very good on if you're working on something like a ghoul or any kind of uh, creature of that sort going off to the next we have what I call the strawberry in the uh, last time and you could see let's see it was pretty much this tool right here, and this was rolled in, and as you can see, you get a reverse imprint because of all the indentations. That little makes a bunch of little scales. You might have to go over it a few times just to uh, to get that right. And I also added a couple little bumps. That would be one of... Here's a good shot of my arm. You have a little indentation tool. You roll the clay, you put that in, you set that in, and once that's out, you could take a regular sculpting tool and then you just clean it up a little bit so it blends right in there. I even make these homemade too. This works pretty good. I kind of made my own sort of finger here out of Abe's epoxy sculpt and then I covered it in uh, crazy glue. Uh, what do they call that now? It has a different name. Oh, Wellington, what is the name of that they call it? Uh, see, uh, what the hell? It's uh, extreme power thin. Oh, this stuff, whatever this stuff is. Uh, CA glue or something like oh, that. Hold on, let me back up a second. Okay, yes. There we go. We're from the 70s. Everything was crazy glue. And they, they, they like glued this guy's head to a beam or something. They're like, oh, look how good it sticks. Oh, they were all horrified as a kid. But hey, yeah, he, he made his $5. It was the 70s. Back <laughs> then, $5 was like $6. So it was like much worth much, <laughs> much more. Okay, so we'll move on to the next texture here. This was basically the first texture, and I decided to go crazy with it. So, okay, we started off very much like the first one, you know, with a regular rolling the clay in there, doing this, and then I added a few more texture tools that were just a little bit stronger. Like, if you can take a look at these in here and there. And you really have to experiment, you know, make things and try them out on the clay and see how they come out. And as you can see, these were dug in and pushed around and Several times I'd roll little pieces of clay and put them across. Maybe I'll show a little example later how you do that and then work those into there. This part right here is actually, I'll, we'll do that on another video. But you know those beanie babies, all the guts inside of them? Well, that's basically the guts of a beanie baby mixed with epoxy. And then I take transparent uh, airbrush paint. In this case, it's uh, yellow and dark olive. Mix them all together and that makes a nice little goop. But we'll take care of that some other day. Okay, moving on to this. Going back to these, I made several different sizes of the little bumps in there. For this, and let's see, we have different sizes, different indentations, and you roll the clay in and set it in, and then take the smaller one and build and just clean that up a little bit with that. We'll show that a little later. Okay, this one right here, this has a much harsher 
type of uh, texture to it. This one here was the one I mentioned that was these right here, where I took a Brazil nut and I rolled it over, I rolled a Brazil nut around it and then filled in a few little spaces here and there to get it exactly the way I wanted. And as you can see, compared to the mild one, it, it almost looks a lot, a lot alike, but this one has a lot of smaller detail. So that was put in with that, you know, rolled and and I also do a little trick where I get uh, pistachio nuts. You get the pistachio nuts, you cover them in sand first, always with the sand, the epoxy and sand on the top of them. I press them in the clay and then I cover them over with more clay and it gives you bumps. And you're like, well, why don't you just roll regular clay up? Well, this way here, it's just you, um, it gives you kind of like a uniformity to it. It works very well for me and you, you save on clay. So that's why that works. And the lips for this up here. These were done with this tool right here. You can see I just had a little, just had that work there so it was, could be rolled up. And remember, it, whatever is here is going to be reversed when it finally goes onto the lips itself. So as you can see, it's kind of like a, uh, how do you explain that? Like a wrinkly Tic Tac? I don't know. <laughs> uh, so we got the wrinkly Tic Tac. And to polish it off sometimes, sometimes you'll have a very hard area. So you could use a, uh, a wire tool to just sort of, you know, fix in a couple of areas that are difficult to reach with the texture tool. This one here was just a piece of 1 8 copper pipe. I took a piece of wire and just bent it in there and just crimped it. Very simple. And, oh, okay, then we have the, the tentacles. And as you can see, this one has a similar, te the similar texture to, the, uh, to this one here, but... For this one, I had one that was a little bit indented on the inside, so when I did make it, I was able to roll this and get that kind of texture. And a few deep, a little deeper spots, I went back to the original tool. So that was basically that. This one here was the mild texture, it was this tool right here. And then I went back and poked it and hit it with a few other, here's another little texture tool. I made them just a little bit smaller and just, you know, fill these in and kind of roll them here and there. You have to really experiment with it. And this final one was just a really, uh, this is a goofy one I made years ago. I don't even know what the hell this was. I think I, I took an action figure and I rolled it off of it and it made this really bizarre texture. And that's what I used for this one. And then went back and put little bumps, reverse bumps in there, little craters with this tool. This here was originally a piece of um, aluminum foil. I made it into a horn shape. I covered it in the clay. And then I simply took one of, uh, one of these type of texture tools. Where it's kind of like a claw, as you can see there. And I just, just worked the bottom of it in there. And then I added this piece over later before I cooked it in the oven. And okay, we have this one here, which is basically, you know, the same thing. Started with a light texture and just started going crazy with the other the other tools. Here's a finer sort of tool. You can just experiment, just make a ton of different ones. And I work those in. Okay, oh yes, yeah, so you can also see those eyeballs here. I'll get into that later. These are actually made from those really cheap uh, craft store beads. There's a trick to do that with. I'll, I'll get into that later. Okay. At the end of this video, we're just going to do one fast recap of all the texturing tools. Now, this is the first video we ever made, so you can consider this an introduction to it. We may go out in the uh, future, may do another one, but uh, we don't know what the hell we're doing because we're chaotic evil. I always thought I was lawful evil. So, so for now, here's um, here's a recap. So here we go with the uh, the mild tools. That's getting a texture with the mild tool. Da, 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 da. So you got those little textures. You have to really experiment with it. So that could be the mild one. And then you can come forth with, uh, here's a good one. So the next step up and you could do little, just work it in, see what works best for you. That'll make a nice little gnarly sort of thing. Then you can roll little pieces here. Get like a vein effect. And this tool. Before I before I texture it, I'm going to smooth it in. And I should be doing this with my glasses on because I really 
starting to turn into uh, Thelma from Scooby Doo. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Happens when you get older. They're like, oh my god, where did my eyes? Where did everything go? Everything just falls off you, literally. Uh, You're guess, not old. Eh, uh, it could be from being the disciple of Nurgle, so in that case, it should be considered like a gift of Nurgle, so I should not complain. So, okay, you can do these little... Matter of fact, I don't even need a texture tool. I can just keep going with this until I get an effect that sort of matches what's next to it. So that's a little vein effect right there. And what did I do? Oh, yes. Remember I told you, here's the trick of the, uh, the pistachio shell trick. See, hey, first you eat a ton of pistachios, you gain 100 pounds, and then... You, with those, you know, I covered this with the epoxy, then the sand, put that on there. Everybody's still screaming, dude, why don't you just like ball up a piece of, uh, of uh, scorpion, dude? But I uh, know, this is the way I like to do it. So, la, ta, 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 here we go, sculpty, 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 okay. So there's that big, nice little ingrown pimple for Dr. Pimple Popper. Oh, <laughs> knocks us off the table. Oh, oh God. No, you know how many times I've done that? I had this on the stairs and I stepped on it. There's a huge story behind that, but that's that was very sad. I had to, like, rebuild it. It took a whole day to rebuild the damn thing. Okay, so there you go. You have a nice little pimple there. And then let's go back over with my favorite tool, the light sculptor. Around the edges, you could use the other side, kind of get it nice and pimply, pimply gooey. And that goes into that. And let's have a little bit of fun. And where was that tool I put down a second ago? Okay, go back to one of these little weird tools and just add a little, just play around with it. A lot like that. And okay, yeah, that works good for me. Okay. Oh, yes, and then let's add smaller pimples. So we're going to take this, put it on there, wipe it down so it's about even, then add a small little ball on the top. That helps it a little bit. Tiny little ball. And okay, put that there. Work that in. Just, uh, okay, so there you go, a little pimple there, and then you, could, you can work around that. And sometimes you can make it pock too. You could just maybe take that and there you go. See a little pock thing and you can put all gooey crap coming out of it. Okay, let me clean this up a little bit here. Okay, and as I mentioned before about when I did the lip, I'm going to uh, just roll this into a shape here. Put that there. And okay, we have this tool and we're just going to roll up there and see it has that kind of lippy effect. Da, 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 da. And like I mentioned before, if you have a couple of, uh, you can go back over with this tool and get a couple of spots with it. Just uh, get some hard to hit areas. And we're going to clay on this still a little piece here. Okay, fill that in there. Go back with the blending tool. Now, when we go over, when we do the uh, the Nurgle Rhino, which is a, uh, a transport for the game Warhammer, uh, we'll be going over a lot more. This is just the quickie intro. But it'll be very similar to all these textures here. Yeah. Okay, yeah, something like that. I can whatever. Now say you want to uh, this is a very good practice for you. If you know you, you've never you've never done this before, you want to try it on something, you're kind of afraid on your first thing, you don't want it to be a big project. If you play the game Warhammer you could just make terrain, which would just be like these guys will run around in like a big fungal area. So what I do is I basically, I take a piece of uh, aluminum foil, I pack it into a ball, and then I kind of heat it up with a hammer a little bit too, just get as solid as possible. I uh, 
I stuck a wire in there and I epoxied it in too to make sure. So it gives me something to grab right to the end. And here's what they look like when they are finished. Well, they're not finished yet, but this is after you epoxy this and sand this. Okay, so, and you could just make little pieces for your, uh, for the fields and stuff like that. You can just experiment. You know, we're going to, let me take this and, I mean, basically you're making, a, you know, alien fauna or mushrooms or say you work in a haunt, you can make like fungus coming out of the walls or something. It doesn't have to be like a, a perfect project that, you know, you have to really worry about, you know, being overly critiqued on. So, yeah, so basically for practice, uh, you know, steal your mom's aluminum foil, do this to it, and make a nice little uh, garden. And as you can see, yeah, and just, you know, texture it, experiment with it, and cook it, and there you go. You could, uh, it'll look really cool on the field around these guys here. I think I have a, okay, uh, oh, let me show you. I have a quick example. Yeah, these are some of the things I just slapped together for the, uh, and I've used them actually in haunts. I've had them, uh, you know, coming out of the walls and such, and I'm using them now for Warhammer, for they could be used as obstacles and such for terrain. And, okay, so I guess that wraps up our first video. And, um, oh, well, say goodbye, Wellington. Yes. It's uh, very good. Goodbye. Very good. Very bye, good. bye, everybody. Bye. bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>